Windows, um, even more about Windows. So what's wrong with um, the windows in these pictures? Well, let's start with um, this one. Uh, you can see the windows are kind of indented. So some of the windows are at this level, then some at this level, then some at this level. So there's all this extra wall, which means there's more surface area for the building, which means it's going to lose a lot more heat. So um, this may look very nice. It may be very nice when you want to lose heat. Um, but if it's in the middle of winter, this is going to use a lot of heating. Um, I wonder why they did this. May not have been thinking about low energy. Um, we need to think about low energy. So um, how can you make windows better? And uh, which materials are good? which are bad for making windows. Um, here are some materials and the number, the lower the number, the better for making windows. Um, at the top, you've got the gases and the gases can go between panes of glass um, to make double or triple or even quadruple windows. Um, the XPS, there are other kinds of insulation are available as well. You need something that's some um, solid and has some strength because windows need to hold the glass together. Uh, wood is also good for windows, has a, a relatively low U value, good insulator um, compared. PVC is also fairly good. Um, and glass, you do need glass in the windows, otherwise you can't see through them. Um, and uh, aluminium is something you, you don't want. You may want to have aluminium on the outside of the windows, um, but if the heat's going this way, uh, the aluminium needs to go this way. If you have aluminium going through the window, the heat is just going to find its way through your window. So um, these are the, just to um, remind you from the last time, these are some of the developments uh, and the improvements they've made. So double pane windows made windows 50% less heat loss. Uh, low E makes a 20% difference. Um, changing from air to argon and making that thicker makes a 45% difference. And going to triple makes another 50% reduction in heat loss. Going to Krypton gives another 20% reduction. So you can get um, something like 90% better you can get 90% less heat loss um, by going through all these steps when you're starting from single pane glass. Uh, here are a couple of pictures of windows. Um, which do you think is better? Um, the one on the right, at first sight, you may think, oh, that's four panes, that must be good. But in fact, this is the window's open. This is actually two double pane windows. Um, if you look how thin the frame is, um, that should be a bit worrying. I think what's happened here is they've taken um, a standard single pane window frame and just put another layer of glass on. And this may help for the glass, but remember the frame is a, is a, a weak link. The frame is, the, is the, where the heat goes um, if it's an aluminium window. So if you don't do something about the frame, um, the double the double glass is not going to be as effective. Um, on the other hand, the window on the left is a triple pane window, um, and we can see that they've thought about various other things in this window. Um, next question. Um, this is uh, aluminium. Uh, one of these is designed to conduct heat. Um, aluminium is often used as a radiator. So, for example, computer parts uh, make a lot of heat, get very hot, and they, they use aluminium to take heat away, um, conduct and convect heat away to keep your computer parts cool. Uh, that's one of those. One of those is part of a window frame. Um, which one is which? Um, this is a bit of a cheeky question. Um, the point is, though, why are we using something 
that's very good at conducting heat. Why are we using that to make windows, which often windows we don't want them to conduct heat because we want to stay warm inside. Uh, this is another, um, according to the description for this picture, um, frames and sash can be filled with foam insulation for added energy efficiency. Um, I don't think it will add much energy efficiency because filling it with foam, there's air there to start with and the foam is not going to be much better than the air. Um, that's um, not going to work especially if that's, I don't know if that is aluminium, if it is aluminium, the foam is not really going to make any difference. Um, so windows then, windows are the most common source of regret for builders and homeowners. Um, homeowners wish they had a window in a different place or a different kind of window. Um, and they lose, as we've seen, something like 30 to 50% of a building's heat is lost by the windows. Um, and in the summer, the windows can gain a lot of heat. Uh, so we need to think about these things for windows. Um, and we need to think carefully where to put them and which windows to use. Um, the important for the performance of a window, we want to look at the U value. Uh, so the U value tells us how much heat that window is going to lose. Um, we can calculate this. A simple calculation is just looking at the glass as we've done and looking at the frame. Um, we also need to remember thermal bridges. Now, thermal bridges happen um, whenever we have um, two different materials joining, when we have corners, when we have junctions within a wall or across the thermal envelope. And of course we have windows, we have thermal bridges um, for windows. Um, how many do you see? Well, just this is an, an idealized idea of a window where we have the window and the frame, um, two different areas. Um, around the where the window is in the frame, there'll be a thermal bridge. And around the window where the window is installed into the house, there'll also be a thermal bridge. And thermal bridges are usually measured over length. So if you have two materials joining each other, what's the length of this join between them? Um, and this gets the, the value, the U value is as well as the areas or in simple. So this is the European calculation for windows. You need to know what the U value of the glass is and the area of the glass. You need to know the U value of the frame and the area of the frame. You need to know the, the psi value, the thermal bridge of the spacer between the frame and the window, between the frame and the glass, and also the installation. So when the glass is put in, when the window is put into a building, what's the um, thermal bridge effect around the window? And of course, this will be different depending on the size and the shape of your window. So the amount of frame and the amount of glass, if it's a small window, um, the frame is going to be the same width, but the proportion of frame is going to be much more. And we'll look more, we'll look a bit more at some thermal bridges in a moment. Um, in the US, they calculate slightly differently. They look at the U value in the center of the pane, they look at U value at the edge of the frame, and they look at the U value of the frame. Um, and these are two different ways to to try and calculate the same thing. Um, so I'm going to show you some pictures of some windows and let's think about the um, areas of the windows. Uh, I'd just like you to estimate these. Um, and what percentage do you think is glass in these, uh, in these um, pictures? And what percentage is frame? Uh, and also, what are the thermal bridges? So we talked about where the glass joins the frame, where the frame is installed into the building. Um, and thermal bridge depends on the length. So how many meters? So how, what's the? So we need to know the area of glass. We need to know the um, length of the windows. Let's um, pick one of those windows. Uh, this is an old, um, an, an English house, probably 1950s. 
Um, and these are typical windows you get in England where you can, you've got part of the window you can look through. There's a bit up here you can open for ventilation. There's another bit you can open this way on the side. Um, this is a um, house in Japan. I think this is a new built house. And let's have a look at this house then and see what the areas are. Um, I guess um, that we've got, I think that's about two metres, I'm guessing that's two metres, um, and it's about 1.8 metre wide, top window is about one metre, bottom window is about 700 millimetres, and we can work out, um, so we can look at, we can look at all of the, um, the window itself, the whole window is two meters by 1.8. Um, and the glass, we've got four, but there's eight, eight different um, glass windows all together. Uh, and so we can work out their area. It's about 1.6 meters. Uh, so the frame is the window minus the glass. That's about two meters. Um, and in this window, the glass about it's about forty four percent glass, and about fifty six percent frame. So most of this window is not glass, um, which is bad for a couple of reasons. Um, one of the reasons, um, well, we want the point of a window is to look through. Um, and we, as we saw before, if it's the same window we calculated before, if it's an aluminium frame, then the aluminium is going to lose more heat than the glass. So this window's performance is going to be, is going to be um, less good. Um, so thermal bridges then. Let's look at this window's thermal bridges. Um, and we've got, actually, these look like opening windows. So there's a thermal bridge where the glass is fitted into the frame then where the frame is opening in the bigger frame then there's a thermal bridge all the way around where the big frame is installed into the house uh, there are four of the bigger windows and four of the smaller windows um, if you add up all these lengths it comes to about 50 meters so as well as this window having a very large area of frame it has a very long thermal bridge, a long list of thermal bridges, which will usually make the performance less and less. Um, it would be much, just looking at heat loss, it would be much better if this was just one window, one nice big window. Um, I'm sure there's a reason for that. I'm sure there's a reason for that. I'm not sure what the reason is. Um, so just looking at the thermal weak link then, if you have um, double glazing windows, the frame should be better at insulating um, and the glass will be a bit worse at insulating. The frame should be better. Um, if it's made of aluminium, it won't be. Um, if you go up to triple glazing, um, the glass becomes better at insulating and the frame becomes the weak link. Um, there are improvements all the time frames are getting better. Um, so, uh, and single panes, if there's only one layer of glass, this may be better than paper. At least if glass gets wet, it's still worse. So let's just think about what else windows, so there's another important thing that windows do, and that is what's called solar gain. So as well as being there, that you can see through, you can see outside, um, as well as letting in natural light, Windows also let in heat, um, and this can be very helpful and can be very helpful for your heating. Um, there are a few things though. First of all, the um, solar the solar gain is just through the glass and not through the frame, obviously. So if you have a window um, that's two square meters, if it's got one square meter of frame, there's only one square meter left of glass. There's also what's called a G value, and depending on the glass, the glass doesn't let through all the radiation. Um, and if you have more layers of glass, less heat gets in, so there's less solar gain. Um, there's also the reveal. 
So often a window is set into the house a bit. As it's set in, there's less solar gain. Um, if you've got objects, you may have a tree in front of the window or the house next door. Those will all reduce the amount of sun, the amount of solar gain you get. And also, if the windows are not clean, the dirt's going to drop the um, amount of amount of solar gain as well. Um, these are the these were our different kinds of windows. Um, and as you get more layers of glass, um, the G value goes down. So a single layer of glass is about eighty seven percent G value. So most of the heat goes through if it's one layer. Um, two layers it goes down to about seventy seven percent. Um, and three layers goes down to about 60% or 50% even. So you're losing about, if you start to use triple plate, triple glass, you lose about half the heat of the sun just because it has to get through the glass. Um, if they're good windows though, if you have good quality windows, um, you gain more sun, you gain more heat from the sun than you will lose. Um, this, of course, depends where you are, um, and some places it's easier, some places it's more difficult. But generally, good good windows will get, they're, they're bringing heat in overall. Which makes you think about an idea called passive solar. And the idea behind passive solar um, is that you can heat a house just from the sun. And you need to do this by having big windows. And if you get big enough windows, then you can get enough heat from the sun to make your house warm. And this sounds wonderful. Um, is it a good idea? And uh, do you have any problems with this? Um, well, this idea is not new. Um, this goes back, I think, to the 1980s. And here's an example of a house that they built for passive solar. So you can see there's a huge, um, that's facing, we're looking at the south side of the house, um, huge windows, so lots of sun can come in. Um, however, there are some problems with this approach. Um, solar heating varies um, from day to day. You can have sunny days, cloudy days, and rainy days. And this means you often need a buffer zone so inside the window, you may need another space, which may get hot, too hot on sunny days, and maybe too cold on cloudy or rainy days. Um, you do need a lot of glazing, and glass windows are expensive, especially if you're trying to get double or triple glazed windows. Um, you need some way of storing the heat maybe in the house because you may want to keep warm for a cloudy day. So um, I don't know how you would do that. Um, generally then, your passive solar house is going to be too cold if it's overcast, if it's very cloudy, or what if it's snowing? Um, and you may need some backup heating anyway. Um, and if it's a very sunny day, you may get overheating, so you may need cooling or to open the windows. Um, so this um, is, there was a, um, a battle between passive solar and super insulation. And generally it's better not to try to heat your house just with the windows. It's better to just have good insulation all around and then you reduce the amount of heating that you need. Um, and it's not reducing the heating to zero, but you're you're using you're need you're needing less heat. Um, because if you try to use passive solar, you may need heating anyway for when it's cloudy or when it snows for a week. Um, this debate finished in the 1980s. Um, people realized that um, passive solar is on its own is not a good idea. Um, but people still try now to build houses, to build passive solar houses. Um, and there's another but, and the other but is that if your house does have windows, then it makes sense to think about where the windows are and to think about the free sun, 
the free heat from the sun, um, if possible. And usually it is possible. Um, and it's usually not so difficult. So um, if you have an idea of the summer and the winter, now the sun is high in the summer and low in the winter. So it's, it's very easy to put shading. In the summer, you don't want the sun in your house because it'll get too hot. And in the winter, you do want the sun in the house because it's, it's colder. So you can quite easily put shading, which will block out all of the high sun in the summer and will let in all of the low sun in the winter. Um, you can also use mechanical shading. So you can have shades that will come down and block your window um, in the summer. Stop the heat coming in. Um, and the other thing to think about is which side of the house you have windows on. Um, now, if possible, if you're going to have windows in your house, and if it's possible to have them on the south side, that's the best place to put your windows. Um, the and you can on the south side you can have a fixed fixed shading, or you can have shutters on the south side. Um, you want less windows on the north side. There's usually no sunshine on the north side of your house. Uh, so you're not going to get a lot of sun coming in, a lot of heat coming in. You're going to get sun, you're going to get light from the sun, but very little heat. Um, and it's better to have fewer windows on the east and the west. Um, on the east and the west, you don't get very much sun in the winter. And you do get sun in the summer where the sun is low in the east in the morning in the summer and is low in the west in the summer in the evening. So it's a good idea not to have, especially on the west, um, it's a good idea not to have so many windows on the west side of your house because often that's the afternoon sun when the house has already got warm and it'll just make it warmer. So let's next think about the window size and the window shape. Um, and what difference will this make? Um, is it better to have a few big windows or many small windows? Um, we can see from our calculation um, that bigger windows are better. It would be better if you can have one big window instead of four small windows. Um, the big windows will have more glass to frame. So as well as glass possibly being better at insulating than the frame, um, you get more solar gain. The frame doesn't help you bringing heat in, um, the glass does. Uh, bigger windows will have less um, psi value, so the thermal bridges will be less. Um, so you should have, if possible, um, fewer smaller, uh, fewer bigger windows is better than many small windows. Um, so back to this building here. Um, this is interesting that they have so many windows and I'm not sure why they have these windows. It must be a design idea. Um, it's certainly not going to help them thermally. I don't imagine it will make a very nice view. Um, a single window would probably make, make it much nicer to look out of the house. Um, Another thing with this window, I think this is facing north. So they have um, a lot of windows on the north side of the house, uh, which is not the best side for windows. So um, again, I don't know, there may be design reasons, there may be good reasons to do this. Um, I don't think there are good reasons for saving energy. Um, so Let's look next then at how much heat we are going to lose from our windows. Um, and we can calculate this fairly easily. Um, we have, if it's a single pane window, it's about six watts per square meter Kelvin is the U value. Um, one year we have 80 kilokelvin hours, at least where we are here. This is different in different places around the country and around the world. Um, let's say we've got four meters squared of windows in our house um, and we can work out the heat loss through these windows. Um, and we can work out how much this will cost us. 
So um, if we can work out, it's about 10 yen per kilowatt hour. So heat uh, costs money. Um, and it depends how you make the heat. But if it's something like that, that's costing, those windows are costing you. Um, that's how much the windows are costing in the amount of heat that you're losing, which you then need to warm your house if you want to keep them warm. So is it worth it? Uh, let's say you have single pane windows and you want to change them into some better windows. Um, how do you decide whether to do this? Um, you've got four square meters of windows. What you need to do is think about the single pane windows you have now. Um, and if you change them, how much heating will the new windows save in a year? Um, and how many years will it take for your heating saving to pay for the windows? Um, so here are four choices of windows. So you want to get new windows. And um, there are different windows with different costs. Um, these are more or less how much you pay for the different. These give you an idea of how much different windows, different kinds of windows cost. Um, so the, the cheapest, obviously the cheapest windows are single pane. Um, double pane are more expensive. Um, double with argon is more expensive still. Um, triple gets a little bit more expensive if you're going for argon and PVC. Um, and if you go to krypton and wood with insulation, then that gets even more expensive. Um, so is it worth spending this money? Um, and we need to think about, first of all, how much heating, if we change windows, how much heating, how much less heating do we need to do? Um, and how many years will it take to pay back? Uh, how do we calculate this? Um, well, here are the steps. First of all, you need to calculate the original heat loss. So how much are these windows, how much, are you, how much heat are you losing right now? And we just did that before with the single pane windows. Um, we then need to put in new windows and calculate the heat loss with those. Um, then we can compare the difference. Um, and we can look at how much that will cost per year. Um, and then we can work out, well, how many years do we have to, until we've saved the money for the windows? Uh, for example, let's just, let's try switching to double glazing. Um, so the heat loss was um, 1,920 kilowatt hours per year. Um, the double glazing is 2.3 watts per square meter Kelvin. Um, it's about, that's how much we're going to lose through them per year. And so the saving then, we're saving 1,184 kilowatt hours per year. Um, and so that's a cost um so what we're by putting in the new windows, we're paying less. We're paying um, eleven thousand eight hundred and forty yen less per year. So if we look at the um, the price of the windows, the windows cost seventy five thousand yen. So after six years, um, we've paid for the windows. We can keep using the windows after six years, and then it's some um, saving us. We don't need to buy any more windows. The windows will last more than six years. Um, so uh, you can go and think about the other. What about the triple? What about the argon? What about the krypton windows? How, how, how much do they save? How long do they take to pay back? Um, just did we use the right calculations for this? Did we use the right numbers? Um, and should we consider anything else? Is there anything else to think about? Another, another thing to think about with windows is let's say we want to build a low energy building um, and we have decided um, we, want, we need four square meters of windows. We want windows in our house. We don't want to live in a cave um, and we want about four square meters. 
um, which windows do we need for our low energy house? Um, and we need to think about the rest of the house. So the house is going to lose heat through the windows and through the walls and through the roof. And we need heating. We need to use energy to heat the house. So let's say that we have a target. We don't want to use more than 25 kilowatt hours per square meter per year for our house. Um, and let's look at these different, let's try to choose one set of windows and let's think about the rest of the house. So if this is our target, we're trying to, we're trying to keep our heat loss down to 25 square meters, 25 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. And um, what do we need to do in the rest of the house if we use each of these windows? Um, so to do this, we need to calculate the heating per year for the house and then take away how much heat we lose to the windows. And then the rest of it, we need to work out the U value for the rest of the house. Um, for the house is, let's say it's a 35 square meter house. Um, and let's say the walls and the roof are about 100 square meters. Um, and the windows are four square meters. So we've got to remember, we've got to use the right area when we talk about areas. So there are three different areas. One of them is the floor area. One of them is the wall area, which is where the heat's going to lose, the heat's going to escape. And the other one is the window area within the walls. Um, so let's try the uh, double glaze. The U is 2.3 windows. Um, we're going to lose, in a year, we're going to lose 736 kilowatt hours per year through those windows. Um, our total budget for the house, our target for the house is 875. Um, so that means if we're using these windows, the rest of the house um, needs to lose less than 139 kilowatt hours per year. Um, we can use this calculation again, we can turn this around to, to work out what the U value is. Um, given that target, um, the area is 100, uh, G is 80 still. Um, that puts the U value for the rest of the house at 0 0.017 watts per square meter Kelvin. Um, is that possible? Well, looking at our insulation materials, that would need to have, the walls would need to be two meters thick, made of XPS for our house to meet the target. So it, it, it's, it's possible to build a low energy house with these double windows, um, but it's gonna be very difficult. Um, how about the other, what, a, what kind of window should we use then? Um, please uh, go away and think about which windows we should use, and if we use the triple, some of the triple windows, um, how much, what U value do we need for the wall if we're going for that target for the heat loss? Um, what else do we need to think about? Another two things that we, we're not thinking about here. One thing is that the, um, one thing is um, the solar gain. So um, we're also gonna get some heat coming in through the windows and going from single to double, going from double to triple, we actually get less solar gain. So it's possible that double windows will be better for your house, depending where you are, because double windows get more solar gain. They lose more heat, but they also gain more heat. Um, if it's cold, triple tend to be better to avoid cold spots. Another thing, is um, if it's easier to heat your house, then you may end up using more heating. And um, I'll talk more about this another week. Thank you.